This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it is the Awesome Cast. It's time to get geeky, get, get awesome. We're with you in the uh, Sogatron Media Studios here in Pittsburgh, PA, in the Beachview neighborhood, where there's a lot going on here. More and more everything. We had Lucha this weekend, Chilla. Lucha Libra, across the street from here. John Chichilla joining us. He's the gadget guru at Big Bank International Esquire. How's it going? It's good. You've had a week for gadgets, that's for sure. I did have, yes, it was an Apple week. It was an Apple Which week. Be followed by google week and then microsoft yeah <laughs> they get the first crack at it of course and then we got a special guest with us joining us for the first time ever we've done we've done stuff together yes we've done this this little project called web thinger that that uh scott mctaggart started we were, we were given a shot at it and it was interesting <laughs> yes so but uh crystal grandy joins us Hi. and amongst this you you've done uh, uh stuff with hgtv you've worked on uh, um I can't remember the name now. <laughs> it's okay. Restored by the Fords. Restored by the Fords. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, restored. For, yeah, like, it's, a, it's a cadence thing, and yeah. that's usually where I get lost. Uh, but uh, And, of course, you started your own uh, media company recently as well. Tell us what's going on with you. Um, yeah. So it was, um, it's was. it been about five months now, and it's actually been going um, really well, surprisingly. I think it's like you open your own company, and you're just like, really hope this works. And then when it starts to work, you're like, oh, my God, it's working, you know? Um, <laughs> yes, very very familiar with that. <laughs> yeah. So um, I, I really love it. And, you know, I'm doing a lot of social media, writing, blogging, video, um, photography, and just kind of trying my hand at a whole lot of different things and seeing what sticks. So mm-hmm. throwing it against the wall, essentially. <laughs> Awesome, and that's a uh, so uh, that's cool. That's cool. So thank you for joining us, and we yeah. get a little bit of your perspective as another media professional here on the show too. There's a lot of media making devices that were announced this week. Uh, but anyways, this is your the awesome cast. You can check us out at awesomecast.com, and uh, we're working under the hood a little bit. We might have a very new awesomecast.com rolling out here in the coming weeks, so stay tuned for that. And uh, I'm liking the look of it. A producer Missy has been working on that, and of course. You can uh, hit us up, AwesomeCast, uh, at SorgatronMedia.com on the email. AwesomeCast on the Twitter, on the Facebook. Please join our AwesomeCast Facebook group where uh, you guys uh, have a lot of influence. We have a lot of stories uh, that will come from you guys uh, um, from there. And we talk about all the tech things through the week uh, as well. So we appreciate uh, the community that's building over there. And, of course, we're live every Tuesday here on our Facebook Live page Um for awesome cast at 7 p.m. Eastern time. You can join us in the chat room, just like our good friends like Brandon from the Kansas City is joining us. Dave Ponder is joining us from here in Pittsburgh. And uh, everybody else dropping in uh, throughout the evening. Really appreciate you guys uh, checking us out. And it's, it's rare in this day and age that there's appointment viewing. And I think that's something cool that we're, we're able to establish here on Tuesday nights between this and the Wrestling Mayhem show. Uh, and thank you for being a part of that. Also, uh, we are live streaming thanks to our friends over at RiversPGH.com every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Uh, so please stay tuned for that. And uh, once a month, I try to get over there for an awesome thing of the month. Probably not doing one this week. There's a lot going on. But we'll be joining them, of course, at the end of the month for Pittsburgh PodCon uh, September 30th. Uh, so uh, uh, over at the Spirit Spirit Lounge, I think it is. Um, I just know it as Spirit. It used to be the Moose over in Lawrenceville. Anyways, oh, okay. I know the, where the Moose was. The 405 mediacom is also streaming <clears throat> us weekdays, 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon Eastern, our friends on the West Coast. Uh, thank you so much for helping spread the word there. Also, if you want to be part of our studio audience or if you want to hit us up uh, to hit up our audience for advertising, uh, you can uh, talk to producer Missy over there at awesomecast.sorgatronmedia.com. And thank you for everybody else that uh, 
supports the show at patreon.com slash awesome cast you guys are literally helping us keep the lights on here in the studio our friends at the coffee club five dollar level matt weller and john diggy Degore, and at the fan of the show one dollar level mike fedora who has been i think definitely our longest um patreon supporter thank you so much for you guys and uh you guys are supporters if you like what's going on here and want to support it at patreon.com slash awesome cast uh so let's get into our awesome things of the week. I I, I want to start this one, guys. I'm sorry. I they we are sending a billionaire to the moon. Is this the? This is the SpaceX. They announced that they're <laughs> going to send a. a uh, I believe it's a Japanese uh, billionaire. Um, I'll pull up the story here in a moment. I I just decided this was going to be my awesome <laughs> thing because I remembered it and, and and I got like overexcited about it, but. Originally, weren't they going to do a whole bunch of people to do like a a moon travel around the moon and back? Yeah, and I now it's down like to like Ashton one Kutcher. person. <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> like I, mean, I feel like he's, he's I don't know he's too busy selling like Nikon cameras or something, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, no, so so yeah, they they announced it uh, today. It's going to be a moon trip, and um, I mean that's exciting. Like one, I don't think we've been to the moon in like what twenty years. Or so, something ridiculous, really? right? Yeah, it's something been a long like time. That. It's been a while. We're just, we, I mean, we got some people on the space station just, you know, hanging out up there and plugging holes with their fingers, apparently. <laughs> uh, but it's the, expensive to go to the moon. It is expensive to go to the moon. That's why this billionaire is the first one to do it. I don't know if I believe we actually have ever been to the moon, so I have to just throw that, you know, that viewpoint out there. <laughs> Okay, there's Crazy that too. So point. depending depending on your perspective, maybe this is the first time that we're going to the moon. Yeah. Either way, um, hopefully we'll put that to to. How are they going to prove that they really went to the moon? Well, yeah. They'll go up there with a newspaper, right? Is that yeah. how that works? Is that that's how that's how you prove your who you are on Twitter, right? Special effects are really good nowadays. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, the man's name is, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Yusaku Meizawa. Uh, <laughs> and they did like a press conference with him and Elon Musk. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's nothing like the Joe Rogan podcast, uh, that happened with him. Jeez, did you see that? I did see that. <laughs> um, but, uh, this is going to be, uh, supposedly we first looped the moon in, uh, 1968 with the Apollo 8 missions. And, uh, this is going to be the first one to be up there for a good while that's exciting. That's exciting. Uh, you know, we're we're that point that at least like this guy feels confident enough that with the technology that we can just he can he can go along for the ride. Yeah. It's because there've been a lot of unmanned um, things. I mean, we've seen like them trying to like do the the unmanned like landing rockets, like you know, on 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 the uh, uh, ocean, but uh, yeah, the 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 barges and stuff that maybe didn't always go so well. But I mean, you know, they got to start from somewhere. So I'm yeah. excited for that. This is the first. This is like. This is like. Like feels like that. We're we're at that corporatization part that eventually leads to aliens. But anyways, but still, it's that <laughs> that's the core cool early part, right? This is how Starship Troopers, it, like the prequels. Were yeah, started. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hopefully, it's like Mars attacks when aliens come. <laughs> You know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> uh, Chilla, what's your awesome thing? So my awesome. So I'm actually not going with Apple. <gasps> so my awesome thing is N- Nintendo's going to be launching their Nintendo Online, mm-hmm. and as a part of that, I think we covered a bunch of shows ago. They're going to be releasing like a, a back catalog of I think 20 games with more games coming afterwards. So they're actually launching like a retro NES controller. Like if you're familiar with the old school two button A B slide, uh, like the, the contra code controller, if you will, um, they're releasing that controller for gameplay. Um, so I'm actually super stoked about that because it's going to really bring back the old feel of the old Nintendo games, the old eight bit games. Mm-hmm. Um, and then at the same time, they've also announced. Uh, Sega Classics, which we've seen this launch across multiple consoles, they're bringing back a number of of the old Sega Genesis games: Golden Axe, Fantasy Star, Sonic the Hedgehog, Toad Jam and Earl. Kid Chameleon was a favorite of mine. I got that in my Easter basket one year. Um, <clears throat> so yet another. Let's throw back to the old school games, and we'll have the old school controller. I'm interested to see 
will they bring back a like a Sega Genesis controller? Will we see this revival of old <laughs> of old controllers? Because I've I've seen stuff where they're talking about doing the what is it? How you can connect the um not the N sixty four the GameCube controller up. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering if we're going to see this revival of really? old school controllers to bring back the, the GameCube. Games. Although although Smash Brothers is single handedly keeping is. Smash Brothers single handedly keeping controller. that GameCube controller alive. Like that when we had somebody brought a Wii U and we did a Smash Brothers tournament here about a month ago with the, oh with, the with the pro wrestlers, and I was like, okay, well, yo, what are we doing for controllers? And he had the adapter, like like you know the game, you know the Wii U had or the Wii had like the GameCube ports in it and then there was still an adapter which they had to when by the time smash Bros. came out for the wii u right like you're not going to do with that big pad and everything yeah. so uh no I, I like that i i that's a that's pretty cool i love that the, the, the controllers like slide in the sides of the the mm-hmm. the switch as well just like the uh, that's how you if you don't have do. if you don't have like a charging if you didn't buy the extra charging stand that's the only that's way the to, only way it, to yeah. charge them so yeah they're gonna they're gonna have to to slide in there it's gonna definitely add bulk. It's not gonna fit in my carrying case, but I can make it work. That's awesome. I like the N sixty four. Yeah. What was your favorite game? Um, I really like Super Smash Brothers. Okay. Actually, fun fact: my little brother plays Super Smash Brothers like professionally. Like really? makes money. He plays as Jigglypuff all over the country. <laughs> oh, I'm wow. not even kidding. The the fellow we had coming in here, he was he's a wrestler locally uh, by the name of Thomas Mathis. Absolute. He's like this bodybuilder, better yeah. than everybody guy. And um, we had an argument about who enjoys Thanksgiving more. Uh, but anyways, uh, <laughs> but he called himself Pittsburgh Pikachu. And of course, he won the tournament. <laughs> oh you know, he's God. the one that brought the, 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 the damn console, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, it, it is, it's amazing seeing how hardcore. Like when they did the, the preview thing for the last round of Smash Brothers, they had an event at Best Buy. We stood around for about an hour and a half. We tried getting it in before we went down the road for a wrestling event we had to work. And, and we couldn't stick around long enough. There was just way too many people. It's amazing how big that game is. What, what I'm interested in seeing is will the third party games like the Sega games. So one of the things you're going to get with the the relaunch of the old Zelda, Super Mario Brothers, etc., you're going to get multi game multiplayer online added. And then the other thing you're going to get is if you've ever played an emulator, you know how you can do a save state. Because back in the day, if you were playing like Metroid, Metroid, yeah, you had the password. You you either had the password or there were some games where you, like I can remember just pausing the game and leaving the console run mm-hmm. for days mm-hmm. on end while you're trying <laughs> well, to get like the original the, Super Mario Brothers, right? Or, yeah, yeah. There's no save. There's state, no right? save. Yeah. yeah. So they're adding that save state into all the old school Nintendo games, and they've been so. doing that with the Sega Genesis ones as they release them on the uh, on on the uh, the iOS and everything yeah. too. So I'm wondering if we'll get that same save state. Back in my uh, day, we just days. left the console on and went to school. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we waited. So. We it was on all all week until next Saturday when you had to, when you were allowed to play again. Or or if <laughs> or if you were a PlayStation player and you, and you didn't have the money to buy a memory card, you know mm-hmm. that's you know that was a thing. I know people did that. I know people did that. You walk in and be like, ah, oh, my mom turned my PlayStation off and I was almost beat the game. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. Uh, but anyways, uh, Crystal, what is your awesome thing of the week? Um, so my awesome thing is going to have to do with TV, I guess, because I mean, I'm not um, as tech savvy, I would say, as you, my friend. But so this is kind of interesting. I've always been behind the camera. Mm-hmm. And this week I actually got a call from Lifetime to um, and I'm already through to the second round of interviews or auditions to be on a new show they're doing called Divorced and Dating. And I like literally took it as a joke the first yeah. time my friend like sent them my way. She works out there and all this casting. And then I talked to them on the phone and they were like, we love you. We'd love to have you sit down in front of the producers and like be on, I guess, one of the recorded interviews that they send to, like, the executive producers for the show. Mm -hmm. So literally tomorrow, that is what I'm doing. I have to, like, sit there for an hour and talk to them over Skype and, like, be a part of, like, the show real for them. (laughs) And then ultimately decide if I really want to be on Lifetime if that becomes a thing. (laughs) So on a show called Divorced and Dating. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) That's kind of – that kind of really – Vision holds you a little bit, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. I was like, I don't know. Because I called one of my best friends after and I was like, oh my gosh, this happened. It's so funny. And she was like, you know, just take a step back. Why do you want to be on this? And I was like, you know, to find like real love. And she's like, 
you're never going to find real love on a reality show, first of all. So. I thought that's how it worked. Yeah. <laughs> That's what that's yeah. That's what we that. learned from The Bachelor, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's all I want, man. Is my like punk rock bachelor, you know? Uh, so, and and then the, the work you do, I mean, it's been like kind of the the, the home and garden. I, I guess I, home and garden is kind of re- reality TV ish, right? Because yeah. you're really like going through the process and everything too, right? Yeah, I mean, it's so. it's unscripted, mm-hmm. so it's not like you know a scripted show where people are reciting lines that they yeah. know. It's yeah. sort of like you're shooting, and if there's a gem, there's a gem, and if not, then you know you just shoot more till mm-hmm. you find the gem. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so that's awesome. That's awesome. So, so you're excited? Ah, uh, yeah. I'm like, I'm like a little bit nervous because I'm like, holy crap, what if this works? Like, mm-hmm. what am I? What will I? <laughs> really? I don't know. I don't know if I. I've always wanted to be on Real World because I love the idea of just being paid to like live in a house and just live your life, live your best life for like a while. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or like Jersey Shore, just get like dr- really drunk all the time. All the and time. Just get paid for it. Like, Around cameras. <laughs> the, thing, the, things we're tell- drink. the things yeah. we're telling teenagers not to do these days. Yeah, I'm like people like get really like, um, I think like think they're awful, but I'm like, I think they're really smart because that looks awesome to go mm-hmm. to like, you know, New Jersey for the summer. Like, glamorous new jersey and like drink all the time and just get paid for it well and i think that's the <laughs> difference too is is you have the opportunity because i think a lot of you know a lot of people go and do this thing and then you know whatever happens happens and they kind of deal with it but you have that both sides of things like i you know i think of you know a lot of the youtubers or or somebody like i justine that like they were good in front of and behind because they were making the stuff too right? yeah so that, that that just helps everything if you understand both sides of it so so you can just ride that at yeah. that point right who knows? Maybe I'll be the next big Pittsburgh pseudo celebrity <laughs> dating they, scene person. There was one season where they were talking about bringing the real world to Pittsburgh. You could re- yeah. revitalize MTV's real world and bring it back. Oh my God, I want that. It was going to be on Mount. Wa- there was the whole rumor was it was going to be on Mount Washington. That'd be amazing if they would have yeah. done that. Oh my God. Like that would be like probably the most picturesque real world they ever would have done, right? And like our uncle Nino, like from the Jersey Shore. I don't know if you guys watch it ever, but Vinny has this like old Italian uncle who is just like the quintessential like Italian uncle like just like a drunk and like hits on all the girls in the house like very like <laughs> funny funny dude like they could totally have a Yinzer version of that in Pittsburgh mm-hmm. like there could be like the weird Yinzer mm-hmm. you know uncle that comes in and like, there's <laughs> a lot of opportunity I mean I mean not I it's probably a bad comparison but like I'm thinking like um um oh what's the duck the duck Daffy? people. No, 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 oh, no. Oh, the no. ducky tours. No, no, no. The the, the reality show where the where's the hillbillies and and uh, duck uh, oh duck dynasty. Duck dynasty. Thank you, thank you. Like it's like they could, you could have a Burgies, you know, S- super so, Yinzer duck dynasty kind of thing, but it's in Pittsburgh. Bethany, right? yeah. Bethany from the current. Yes, had this idea from Monongahela Shore. Oh, <laughs> I like it. Yes, I like it. That's so many possibilities there. You guys listening? Well, hey, you have the connections with. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's put the pitch together and let's see what Perfect. we can do. <laughs> I love it. Uh, but anyways, hey, she's an expert in video. We we do we 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 might be some tech experts around here, uh, but uh, when it comes to. We may, but we may not be the pros when it comes to uh, scaring people, but we know someone who is. Our friends at the Scare House even have a podcast. Dutters, that's usually here, uh, is on it and uh, talks with a lot of really cool people in the business of haunted attractions. And they are open. I'm going to be out there Friday, actually, I just found out, uh, to go check out the Scare House and help get in a... Uh, get, doing a little bit of a project out there, so really excited mm-hmm. for that. The pre the videos up for their uh, new uh, uh, attraction for the uh, the uh, Pittsburgh Zombies uh, redo uh, reloaded. Uh, uh, so go check it out. The Scarehouse Scarehouse dot com Scarehouse Podcast dot com, and of course every Friday they're doing the Scarehouse Weekly on Facebook Live. So go check that out. It's a lot of fun. It's a, it's a lot of fun, and they do a lot of behind the scenes and and sometimes somebody. Sw- Swears on there when they tell them about how close the season's going and everything. So <laughs> that's a thing that happens. So you never know when it's live on the internet. So go check them out, scarehouse.com, and thanks for supporting. Uh, so I have a here's a local focus story for you guys. I was I, I got like really excited about fire trucks last week. Okay. <laughs> the Incline, a local publication here in Pittsburgh, had this article up about um, how Pittsburgh fire trucks navigate the south side slopes. And and this I didn't know. They make specialized fire trucks 
for Pittsburgh. They're ever so slightly a few feet thinner than the typical fire truck to help navigate, you know, things like our weird cow path streets here or the south side <laughs> slopes or Mount Washington and stuff like that. I mean, it still doesn't help when you park when you're not supposed to and they can't make the clearance around a corner. But I, I've just never thought about that, that we're, we're such a specialized town in our weird, weird, weird terrain that we, we have to have specially made fire trucks in order to do their job, basically, at this point. I lived in the South Side Slopes for a while, and I always just assumed if there was a fire that we were dead, that it was like, <laughs> get your most, ex- your days. best, like, most precious things and your pets and, like, run. You're already, like, <laughs> hanging off the side of a hill yeah. wherever you live. You Your exits are limited at that point, too, yeah. right? It's yeah. just like, well, I can leave this side of the house if this side's on fire, but, you know, it's it's you know, going to be three stories from my basement, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's just sort of like, you know, I was like, well, if it happens, it happens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, so that was a fun one. Also, our friend Brandon from uh, Kansas City. Remember we were talking about Fortnite and all the branding options with Nerf last week, Chilla? Yes. Yes. Well, apparently we are getting Fortnite mon- Monopoly. It's going down. <laughs> that why? We have... why what's not? The, what's the... Why not? We have Chihuahua Opoly. But I feel but I feel like <laughs> Fortnite continues to change. Like I feel like the island changes. Like are mm-hmm. we gonna have are there gonna be multiple versions it's of this? It's gonna Monopoly be the game? characters. Oh, it would be cool if you had like upgrade packs for it or something like that, right? But how do you replace the tiles like where you buy I guess you probably on this you just build forts. Uh yeah, maybe like the properties are are forts, right? Yeah, but so. I'm guessing they're the locations in the game, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, this is this is going to be a capture of what Fortnite is now. now. Okay, we're going to be like, oh, the season three Fortnite versus the th- you know season ten, twelve Fortnite later. Yeah, actually, that's it. You just nailed it. Mm-hmm. There's they're gonna there's gonna be a new Fortnite Monopoly every year, and just it's like, just going to be called right, season right. one, season two. It's like you had Star Wars Monopoly, then you had like classic Star Wars Monopoly, new new trilogy Monopoly, right? Like it yeah. just it just factors in. Trust me, they have a plan for this. <laughs> No, they're they're going to have a plan. Their for plan us. is to take your money. Yeah, yeah, that, that that is the plan too. I mean, you're talking about the person that does own a Marvel and Star Wars Monopoly sitting over in the pile for game night. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> I have Star Wars and I have the original. I don't have any of the other ones. I have Chihuahua Apple myself. It, what, how? What do you build? Like kennels? Like you, how like, do you, you do like the collect land? bones and stuff like that? It's adorable. Oh, it is adorable. I'm looking this up. Oh my god! Uh, and yeah. um, you guys also sound like the sort of people I should ask. So I recently saw this game. I'm not a huge gamer. I'm like an old school gamer. I went to Replay FX and was like on the Oregon Trail for like two hours. Mm-hmm. So I'm like that sort of gamer. And Crazy Taxi. Like, oh, I love me some. I play Crazy Taxi every day. Like driving around the South Side slopes with the fire truck. So, <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I I that Jason Voorhees game. Where what game system is that on? It's like the a Friday, Friday the Thirteenth one. It is it on. Awesome. I think Steam and PlayStation. I have, I haven't seen that. Uh, yeah, I, no, I played it on the original Nintendo. Yeah, yeah, okay, no, it's not that one. Not with like Purple Jason. Um, no, it, it was an online game. Um, our friend uh, King Logic from. By the way, go check out King Logic's newest album. It's on all your Spotify and Google Music and everything. Um, when we did Rap Gamers, he did that game, and it's an online. Hold on. It, it looks so cool. It's an online um, uh, uh, Friday the Thirteenth. Um, you're all the sur- like camp survivors and stuff, mm-hmm. and you have to. You can either help each other to get out of there, or just like throw like everybody under the um, like uh, under the bus, under the bus, and just, like and, and <laughs> basically at him. Um, and hold on, I'm gonna pull it up right here. I think it's for every major console. I saw um, too that you can either play as like a counselor or Jason Voorhees and yeah, just like maul yeah. all these counselors like the whole yeah. game. It, it is on PlayStation awesome. 4, Xbox, and I believe it. I, I have seen it on Steam as well, but it's not listed Ooh. here. So yeah, this is a pretty cool game. But the problem is there was a little bit of a lawsuit over Friday the 13th, and they're not allowed to put out any more DLC because it's all kind of held up right now. Yeah. So that's unfortunate. Um. So so like. There's a lot in there already, but I think they're not doing new content. And I haven't seen that was about a month or two ago where that came out. And I haven't seen if there's been other updates um, since. Hmm. So um, and it was weird because it was one of those things that kind of came out of like a beta state. 
Um, I think this was Kickstartered okay. when they did it. And now it's like one of the hottest games, you know. I like want to play it so bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, you'll probably pick it up for a decent price uh, because it's been out for, I want to say, about a year now. Oh, okay. So, I'm way behind. Oh. <laughs> Um, let's see, uh, Brian Crawford, our friend from River's Edge, this was cool, and it looked unreal when I, when I looked at it, uh, this is a jet board, uh, the Carver X, so it's, I don't know how they're, like, what the propulsion thing looks like, I hope it shows it here a little later in the video, but yeah, it's got, um, a, a, a propulsion, it, it just looks like you're just rolling on a surfboard across the water. That's pretty cool. You can surf the Monongahela shore. You can surf the Monongahela shore. There you, can you go. You already do that, though. <laughs> yeah, you can't. Kind there of... w- enough waves to go No, like with there? like one of those boats that okay. makes waves. Yeah. Oh, okay. You can't like do it you all can by yourself. Board, yeah, yeah. Not like surfboard. Yeah. That's you have awesome. to. Like... I want one of those. There's, there's batteries. You can stick batteries in it. Like they, they kind of go in the middle of the board. And um, you so run five, double A's. five power. No, no, no. I think they're kind of a specialized <laughs> battery. Yeah, I was Flux say, capacitor. Wow. A finger, uh, a finger clip wireless remote system. So you're kind of attached to the board through that, and uh, that's what. Man, I hope your balance is good. Like, what happens if you wipe out on something? You like just this? don't want to fall into. Yeah, you really the, don't want to. any of the rivers here. I, I, maybe yeah, exactly. just, like, it's kind of like waste. a special game on top of that, right? Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. It says I, I, I am the the one that, that was jumping in with the uh, 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 the 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 polar plunge on New Year's Day for several years that some friends talked us into. That was oh, cool. Really? So, Chilla, you did that once, I right? Did that. Yeah, yes. you did do that. I did that until I bashed my leg off and scraped the side of my leg and got uh, sick was, a couple of days later. Oh my god! It was yeah. so cold, like you couldn't feel the wall climbing up, and like I just, yeah. I actually, all my fingers just cracked and peeled. Yeah, you would just, you just smash your hands and your feet against the the, the side there because you couldn't feel for anything. You're kind of scrambling and everything like that. Why do you guys do this? Uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me it was really invigorating and and i it was like a it was a big like if i can do this i can do anything kind of thing yeah when we did it um and it it was like the best years of my life when i did it like that was kind of a part of my outgrowth years. yolo my, yeah. mine was total yeah. peer pressure and it was yeah. all the, it was all the pod camp people so i'm like well, yeah. they're all doing it i should do it i like I, well, we brought my father-in-law and i was like okay you know just wait forever wait for everybody he's he he didn't want to wait anymore so he just went and dived head first in and i'm just like well i guess we're going <laughs> and like our group like just went ahead before anybody else on the shore oh and like gosh. and we're like up on the end and everything so there's some videos out there about that oh my dear we have we have the carl and i have that video and it was we were on tv yeah it was a blast mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice. and then the next year we were like yeah no we'll go down and watch but we're not jumping in again oh uh, chilla apparently uh my my app i've run out of room on my laptop and my <laughs> browser crashed so i gotta restart here uh chilla can do, do you have that that story that uh chris Willach uh shared the roblox by one? chance the roblox one <clears throat> i do have it let me open it yeah. Well, cause, uh, so I'm new to Roblox. How Roblox is training the next generation of gaming entrepreneurs. I ha- I'm not going to lie. I haven't read this. So can you comment on it? I was <laughs> hoping to get around. Okay. To so, that. well, you know what? I'm just going to go on a Roblox tangent. Yeah. So, so, so you ever loaded Roblox like no. on your iPad? Okay. Let's start with. Because I have. What is Roblox? So Roblox is like pre-built Minecraft. Okay. With a plethora of user generated content and games mm-hmm. but it looks like it was built by like your 12 year old nephew <laughs> really and it's about as stable as uh, fine what's really unstable it's really is it's it's about as stable as like a gen 1 android build okay <laughs> so you go in and the interface is like i've only gone in and picked like most popular games because some of the games, I can't even figure out what I'm supposed to do or what the point is. Like, there's one game, it's a, it's like a firefighting game. Are you and in the South Side you, Slopes? You're, you're, <laughs> they should make one that's the South Side Slopes. That's a really good idea. That's the hidden level if you go off the, off the map. Bonus level. Yes. But it's like, it's very 8-bit graphic, like a Minecraft. But the whole point is you're, you have, you have a, a water pack and a... Thing to shoot water and you have to go around 
these towns and put out fires. And as you put out fires, you collect coins. As you collect coins, you can upgrade your pack or your hose. Like it's like this thing that keeps going. The interesting thing is it keeps track of your character. So like if you leave and come back, you get all the stuff that oh, you geez. earned. Oh. But, okay. But that so but that's like one of like a hundred thousand games that people have created. So this is like you know, so it, this is basically spearheading people to make their own games out of this, right? Yes. Which turns them into developers, and that's that's really like, and then they can take the next step into getting into some other development platform and hired. Like this is where you can just explore game design. It seems. Yes. Yeah, and it looks like you say it looks like kind of Minecrafty, and I guess they're building stuff in here. And from what I've seen, you can. You can develop with any low end PC, Mac, mm-hmm. maybe even a Chromebook. Well, this thing, check it out. This is actually on, like, you can grab it on Amazon, um, your app stores, and Xbox One, even. Yeah, yes, but to develop on it, it also requires low end hardware. Oh, I don't okay. think you. I don't think you can develop on, like, an iPad. Okay. But you can develop on pretty much anything. But then it. It's cross-platform to your point where then anyone with the client can play. Mm. And it's just extremely interesting. Like, what was that? There was some game that was kind of like an obstacle course. But it was like you had to know. Like, it would be like there's a whole floor of colors, color blocks. And you have to jump from block to block. But you have no clue what the colors. The colors mean nothing. And it's just guessing which block is the right block out of like nine in front of you to jump on. Mm-hmm. And if you jump on the right one, then you don't fall through. And then there's another row of nine. And if you, it's, as soon as you jump on the any of the eight wrong ones, you fall and you're set back to like area one. Mm-hmm. And it's pretty much you have to memorize your way all the way through like which block is the correct block to jump through. Like how, It's like you have to be friends with the person that created the game to even understand Understand. how to get to the next section but it's 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 addictive because to me it's another one of those fortnights where the games are quick and they're quick and you can leave and come back Mm -hmm. with like no penalty so it's like if you have five minutes you could jump into this thing play around for a minute and then jump out no harm no foul Hmm. um so I, i don't know it's it's a very interesting platform and what got me into it was we were we were on a mini vacation over Labor Day, and Christopher saw his cousin playing it. She's twelve. I don't know how old she is. Christopher's four and a half. But he was like, "I need to have this. I need to have this." Um, so we downloaded it, and I quickly took the iPad off of him and started playing. <laughs> so it was a good it was a good time had by all. No, but it's it's a really interesting platform, and it definitely gets people engaged in development and to me there's a pretty much everything's free but it's one of those if you want to pay it's almost like Fortnite. if you want to pay for the outfit it doesn't give you a benefit but you can pay and Mm -hmm. get some tweaks and i didn't see any any of the like the game titles where you had to pay to even play everything was free so Mm -hmm. it it was pretty neat if i made a game on there i think i would call it cat swipe and it would just be like you're in the like in a city, and you're just trying to get all the stray cats that you can to take them home. There you go. It would be an awesome game. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> you just be like a crazy old cat lady. Awesome. Yeah. I, I'm downloading Roblox on my iPhone to see what I can get into on this thing. I so, recommend the firefighting game. It's the pretty firefighting fun. game. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. It's in like the top 100 games or something like that. All right. Uh, you know what, guys? I really like the the, the pizza eating game. Um, and our good friends at Slice on Broadway is supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. I've been doing that for a good long time, right up the street here, the OG, the original, right here in Beachview on Broadway, same street that we're on here in the studio, and of course our other locations, PNC Park, Carnegie, PA, and the East End. Thank you so much to those guys for supporting the show. I know, Crystal, you were excited that we were going to have pizza in here yeah. tonight. <laughs> so, <laughs> so excited. <laughs> that, would, that would actually be interesting marketing. Could they make a pizza-making game where like, you have a line of customers and 
call in delivery orders and you have to make all the pieces and get them out the door. I feel like for them, uh, have you seen the videos? Like they're, but I think it's a it's a box making game because they've been having these like pizza box folding competitions. I think amongst their employees and, and how the quickly owner and they everything. can fold them. Yeah, like how quickly they can they can fold them and like how many how many can you can bust down and everything because you got they you know they prep them and they're lining you know the front of like the PNC Park store and everything right. So when you no know, thousands of people come through, they they're ready. They're not sitting there folding boxes right. Mm-hmm. So uh, th- that is the that's the true pizza uh, foo style, I guess. So, all right, um, Chilla. Okay, we got some stories here. Your number one is is thrilling to me. Is I don't it? Know how okay. you feel about? Oh, it. Oh, by the way, slice <laughs> BJ's underscore slice on the Twitter. I don't know if I threw the rest of the plugs out there. Really, this part. This is the exciting part. I was going to have you talk about Apple chronological but... timelines. I wish there needs to be a revival and a revolt. We need to go back to chronological <laughs> timelines. I like the rest of us. Like I'm, I'm kind of cheating and using like TweetDeck to see it in chronological order, which makes sense when you're like, I said on uh, Monday night, I'm watching wrestling. Because that's when everybody's watching wrestling, right? Um, so that's when I'm going to do my interactions, and we share the shows, and we share the shows that we put out um, between the podcast and between the, the the productions that we do on IndieWrestling.us. So I'm like, I'm going to sit there on Monday night, see what's happening, get on the conversation. How do you do that on regular Twitter? Because I I I can't like to me an event tweet Twitter thing like that is I'm sitting there and watching Twitter. Like and watching like things the good come old through days. the stream, like the <laughs> yeah. good old days, the waterfall, the Twitter fall effect, right? When, and they took it away. And, and I think this isn't. I'm glad to see Twitter is bringing this back, and I hope that others follow suit. Facebook, Instagram, everybody needs to bring back the chronological yeah. option. Like you're the option of I just want to yeah. see what's happening, not yes. what happened that you think I'm gonna, you know, because of whatever reason or something I liked or something, you know, just like let me know what's happening. Yeah. Give, give me another tab that with in case I missed it. You can do this with lists. You can also do this with lists. Let's, yeah. let's be clear. But not too many people are using lists. And stuff like that, they start hiding after a while. They don't want you to use lists anymore. So I, I don't know. How do you feel about chronological timelines? Um, You know, I'm I'm kind of... I'll take it either way. I feel like with okay. social media, you really always have to be able to adapt and kind of roll with the punches. I personally just hate Twitter in general in all its forms. <laughs> I like Instagram. I'm like a very visual person. So mm-hmm. I like to see all the pretty pictures. You know, I'm like a moth to the flame. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, Twitter, I'm like, eh. Twitter. I do like Instagram now. I know like some of the shows I watch have been doing like live Instagram posts that you can like comment on. And mm-hmm. I watch 90 Day Fiance, which if you guys don't, it's uh, maybe it's kind of girly. But this oh, is why we so bring different funny. perspectives mm-hmm. into the show. Oh, my God. It is like <laughs> so funny because it's just all these like Americans and foreigners. And um, some of them are like legit. You're like, mm-hmm. OK, you must really love each other. And then there's like one couple. The woman's like 60. And the guy's like 30. And he lives in, um, what is it, like Nigeria or something like that. And it's like obvious that he is like, I just want to go to America. <laughs> like I will do whatever it takes to go to America. And they just mercilessly just talk about this woman in the comments. And I love it. So I'm into that, you know. I'm trying to think. I've watched a show like that. It was like the people got married, but they had never met. And they literally walk out from both sides of the the church yeah and that it's oh it's marriage at first sight i love that show oh my <laughs> I god i <binge laughs> watch that non non-stop it's was, so interesting because mm-hmm. you're just like like the one couple made it like not even through fully through their honeymoon mm-hmm. and they're just i was like that is like our generation <laughs> like like in a nutshell you mm-hmm. know i mean they're so i think it's so sad that there are so many like marriage and dating shows it's like wh- when did it become this hard like you like somebody you think they're hot like you bang them it works and then you're like okay like i also could eat like pizza with you and like you know watch a netflix movie and not need to bang you let's just hang out for a while and then boom you're married and you have like eight kids mm-hmm. everyone wins there's also <laughs> apps for that now yes so <laughs> yes so, they are and fa- i think facebook is going to have a section for, uh, they started one. Oh, if, was it the college one no i'm thinking tinder there's so many and i'm not involved in any of them uh <laughs> it's like crazy these services like amazon prime now has amazon prime wardrobe 
where you can like get items mm-hmm. sent to your house, try them on, and what you don't like, you can send it back, which is a lot like a Stitch Fix or like one of those clothing delivery services. Yeah. But I think it's really awesome that Amazon does it because a lot of those services pick things for you. This is like you can go on Amazon, pick anything you want, mm-hmm. you know, try it on, and if you don't like it, just send it back. Yeah. Just kind of nice. Was well, like, I got a junk text today, and I'm guessing it's a junk text, but I've been getting a lot of those lately. It's, it's you've been nominated. Here's a link to the Apple Store and the Android Store, and it's to in, what? it's in, it's to an app called IRL. Let's hang. Nominate, <laughs> invite, and hang. Huh. I, I don't know if I should sign up. Like, sounds like a hacking. It sounds scene. like a trap. Well, but it's like, but it, it, it's like, like there's something on here from CN. Like there's reviews from CNBC. Like it has some. They're going to black mirror. Real hangout IRL. Is that what it is? That's what it looks like it's for. What was the name of it again? IRL. Just IRL. IRL dash let's hang. Just be careful. I had to tape my laptop camera up because I got black mirrored, so to speak. <laughs> so just saying, I mean, uh, definitely. Well, here's the, uh, I, this is under Common Sense Media is the, the app review for this. <laughs> um, I don't know about this one. Is this is this the app? Does this look like it, Chilla? I can't. I don't know. I, I'm just looking in the app. Hey, store. Chilla, sign up and let us know how that goes. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> 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 so you'll be our guinea pig for that. Um, I, we do we do need to mention. Apple did an event last year, last week. They did. They released um, devices. We got iOS 12 and uh, Watch <clears throat> OS 5. I got everything loaded up. That was my first big update to the to the watch. And it took a while. That mine took, took like two hours. Time. Yeah, Gosh. mine took like two hours too. So because it needs to download and then it needs to take it, it needs to send it from the phone to your watch and then start the processing. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it's Glad a process. I don't have an Apple Watch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, but so far um. It's been pretty nice. I'm noticing the notifications are grouped up and and, and being able to deal with that. Um, I, I poked a little bit into Siri suggestions, but they're mostly things I can already ask Siri to do, it seems, because I don't think a lot of the apps have rolled out the uh, the support yet. So have you looked at shortcuts on the phone? Like the Siri shortcuts. But did you download the app? There's an app. There's wait, an there's app a, for that. Wait, there's an app I need to download for it? <laughs> oh yeah. Hold on a second. So I need to I need to you, you're telling me I need to download a a separate This didn't just come with it. I need to go look up Siri shortcuts. You need to look up Siri shortcuts. Did you ever download Workflow? No. So Workflow was like an if this then that that was dedic- like a little more Apple centric. So the app is just shortcuts. Yes. Okay. You may need to type in Siri shortcuts or shortcut Siri to because there's a lot of apps. That there's are a called shortcuts, shortcuts app by Apple. Apple. Of course, it's going to be the top one. Yep. So um, check that out because you can make recipes and customize this the S woman command. What should we call her? I can't remember. What? Oh, it's Siri. Siri. Siri? So we, well, I, oh, what? Because, well, it set off a bunch of people's Siri. No, because we're not saying Same. hey in front of it. Okay. Well, because now with the watch, you don't even have to say hey, her name, mm-hmm. or <laughs> anything. You can now just raise your watch. He, he should and, not yeah. be named. Oh, no, that has been. <laughs> You're talking about like it's Voldemort. <laughs> yeah. That actually has been a thing. Because So typically, if I go talk to Siri, like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll start saying something, and then my wife will be like, you know, in the room at the desk, whatever, and say, what'd you say? I'm like, no, I'm talking to, I'm talking to the woman. Uh, I'm talking to the <laughs> computer woman. Um, and, uh, but now it's like, I'm like, this is going to be even worse. Cause now I'm just going to say something to my watch and it's worked. It's worked pretty well so mm-hmm. far. Actually. Uh, I use it coming in inside. Like if I have my, my hands full of bags getting out of the car and I'm coming up, I'll be, I'll raise up and say, turn on the back porch lights, turn on the oh, house wow. lights. Mm-hmm. And it lights my, like my hands are full, I can't get to my keys or whatnot. It, it's perfect. It's amazing. But the so the shortcuts app lets you create recipes and then you can use your own whatever you want to say to activate that that script that, or that recipe. That's where you go Wow. Like, hey Siri, good morning. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> that's we what say, I was trying mm-hmm, to avoid. Good morning. And that's where they say 
it'll <clears throat> order it'll order your favorite coffee from Starbucks that's on your way to work. It'll it'll turn the lights on. It will bring up the it, news. It'll it will, start your car. It'll, it'll start a pod it'll, your morning podcast. Yes. It, you, yeah, start your car. Let you know the weather. It'll boom, 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 boom. You can set it up. Say one thing. And it'll trigger all those things going but on. It can be anything. It can be like, hey, hmm, hmm abracadabra and like you can have your own abracadabra script yeah and that could be your good morning that's what yes. orders the coffee don't you worry magical. that it collects all this information about you though well ideally um this is all anonymized and and on the phone and not like on a server uh, yeah. except for when they need to and then that's anonymized and encrypted and da, 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 da. like that's the line at least from from apple of course. <laughs> and based so. on the based on the fact that there hasn't been a big leak mm-hmm. i tend to kind of believe that yeah it's not to say there won't be but yeah. i mean it's not at least you're not saying um you know hey mm-hmm, take some nude pictures you know yeah. or something like that you know it, this is this is just like your process right um and i, I don't know I, yeah i don't know what person like it's already you have that link to that starbucks app the this app your your gps app and those kinds of things so i mean it already knows all that stuff yeah you know if you're already okay with those things knowing what you're doing you know uh if you're already controlling like you know you know i just got the you go i'm getting re-notified hey this thing's going to use your location of course it's lyft um you know since i've reloaded ios and and everything's kind of refreshing and re-asking me and everything right um so i i think but the apps the apps have to support yes um, like I noticed that I can shortcuts. make I can make shortcuts to hey um, you know get me to work and it'll show me you know how to get to the studio and the address is plugged in but it's using Apple Maps not Waze right interesting so but eventually Waze should support it it's uh, yeah it's up to the app so like one of the things that I've been noticing I think I've gotten sixty app updates in the last day yeah I had since, like forty since the since the the OS release. And one of the things you're going to see in a lot of the top level lines is now supports the shortcuts app, mm-hmm. um, like Text Grabber Six. Oh, seen. hey! So actually, when you go into the shortcuts app, it weighs as an option in there. Okay, so, so you, you you can so switch it up. So this is something I need to spend a bit of time with. Yep. Um, I know, like it. I use Pocket mm-hmm. for for collecting a lot of articles for the show and stuff right. like that. Right. Pocket was right in there day one there's i was amazed at the day one support for this it was it was pretty impressive i have to check that out google news added siri shortcuts to your favorite news sources yeah nice. so nice yeah like everyone's starting to, so to this and this it. is where this is where siri is going to become powerful right because yes. now it, it is going to do a little bit more it is going to have a little more functionality to it and everything right so mm-hmm. like that's that's it um yeah and then dave's talking about like you know combining everything like into a command like as like coming home um uh weather uh weather channel app he says uh, allows allows you to uh use siri to call up radar Ooh, so that's handy that's handy because i know like even when i asked my watch and i'll say i was like because i was kind of curious because the one shoot we're doing this week i was like hey what's the weather friday night and they're like well we won't tell you we can't tell you hourly you know, more than 24 hours out, but other apps will, right? Mm-hmm. They will, yeah. they will predictively as accurate as that is when you're a week out from it. Um, but they will, they'll at least like pull that up. So now, I'm, I'm waiting for people to download this app because you can override. I'm pretty sure you can override the defaults. So like the, what time is it or what's the weather going to be like tomorrow? You could go into shortcuts and code. What's the weather going to be like tomorrow to post your last, the, the person's last picture in their photo and in, in, in their camera roll to, to, to Twitter. Mm-hmm. Like, so you so there's all these ways ar- around actually overriding the def- some of the default command set. Awesome. Have you ever seen where people like go into people's phone books and change like their dad to Darth Vader and <laughs> stuff like that? So, yeah, I, I could definitely see this being a, a fun in games thing as well. Yeah. Uh, that seems like the most exciting thing like things like that and some more functionality i'm already noticing my notifications on the watch have a little more to them Mm -hmm. right um like more details and more interactions than they used to um i think there's there's even more interactions happening on the notifications on the phone and we're talking about the the os features one because it's like a week out from the announcements because basically if you really like the iphone 10 
Um, man, you're going to like any of the phones that they're, they're putting out. The home button is dead, guys. Um, they have uh, uh, the, the line starting with the iPhone. I'm trying to get... I'm, I, I want to say the X. I really want to say the X, especially with the XS. I actually think that's kind of a cool name. Um, it's excessive. It is. It is excessive. <laughs> Although, oh, so so I'm like, oh, they're just going to have new iPhone X's and and there'll be different sizes and there'll be a few new features and stuff and that'll be cool and there'll be a new camera. But I'm still going to feel okay about having my eight plus, right? Then they show everything compared to an eight plus, and it's like, hey, this phone is the same size as this phone. Except the entire thing's a screen, so you get more screen, like way more screen. And I was like, damn it, <laughs> they got me. <laughs> they got me. Um, but still, like it is, like it, they're nice. It did feel like they stretched out a little bit into like an hour and a half, like literally to the new watch, which is thinner. All right, that's yeah. nice, sure. Uh, and and multiple sizes of the basically the new version of the iPhone X. So I, f- I feel like the, and obviously there's no, there's no way we'll be able to prove it. I feel like it was stretched out because there was going to be more announcements. And I think we're going to see uh, those they, announcements they next month. Um, in fact, if you, if you're reading the news today, iOS 12.1 beta one has already launched mm-hmm. and it's available and they're starting to pull stuff out of the code. Um, the FaceTime Groups is back. Remember, I don't know if you realize that oh. FaceTime Groups isn't available yet. Oh, okay. In, in initial launch, FaceTime Groups is back in the next beta, but then so are some um, leaks for Face ID on the iPad and the potential for the iPad as a display. So if you if you've used well, what's the app? Duet Display. Um, they almost make it sound like that's going to be a native ipad really capability where the ipad comes becomes a second although screen. it is fun to do it just with my phone when i'm sitting at a coffee shop <laughs> um you have the, did i tell you about the co- what i do do you know do at display no it's an app that you can get um you download it to your computer um okay. either platform and to your your phone or or what device or ipad or whatever and you can basically just stretch your like if you plug it into monitors like i have here in this yeah. desk your ipad or your phone is a nux is another display Oh, and, it's, and it's cool. a touch screen and display. it's a touch screen so now you've Ooh. turned and now you have a touch display for your mac right yeah. um but i will like sometimes in a coffee shop i just want to like you know i like i like kind of doing work and then watching something off to the side like like a netflix or you know wrestling or something right so i will do the dual display have my phone and put the phone up like just next to it, like propped up like, probably against my coffee cup or something. And that's where I'm watching something on YouTube or something while I'm working on the main display. So it's not, you know, it's not a full like extended display like with an iPad. That would be a pretty good size. Mm-hmm. But it's just like that's enough to watch a video on. I mean, mm-hmm. I am anyways on the phone. And then you have everything in one system. So you only need one pair of headphones. Ooh. That's you want a cool. pair of headphones, but you can use, you can scroll your mouse over there. I bet you it really yeah, freaks people exactly. out that you're you're using your mouse on your iPhone. Yeah, yeah, that too, that too. <laughs> They're dragging it like like down to it and stuff like that. Because um, I mean, you know, that's important for me doing media. Because usually it's it's like working on this, working on this, working on this. Then I have to work on the audio, so you need to do that transition. You know, this is a media media person probably, mm-hmm. right? But you're just like, but in the meantime, I'm gonna throw something else out there to keep my mind going while i'm working on the thing until i need the audio portion so you know it just kind of helps streamline things for my my process so but um let's see where we're at any um so speaking of like the facetime thing i was really excited about this Uh, on this week in tech they had somebody join them um oh dr j o and jj stone joined them um as his memoji the entire (laughs) show that's interesting. It was kind of cool and kind of freaky at the same time. Uh, did they so, explain how they did it? Um, I I don't think I can't think they got too far into oh, that. I'm getting, did they FaceTime him in and then? I think it it's was, a fa- yeah, it was the FaceTime, FaceTime. So he's probably like on the beta or something, right? Well, no, that would be in the new. So that's available. That is available. Groups. It's the group. So they would have brought him in on FaceTime on the Mac. Yeah. Probably on the Mojave beta because yes. that's not out yet. Which means they have a they have one. I guess he has the one, like, so he can re- like I can receive. You can receive one to one FaceTimes with me. Mm-hmm. We're gonna have to try that because I can do that. <laughs> oh geez, we're gonna have. <laughs> hmm. 
Okay, that means I need to patch a Mac into this because I have a PC usually coming on. But we'll figure it out. We'll figure, we'll figure it, out. it out. That's not for the show. That's not for the show. <laughs> um, anyways, hey, I want to give one more shout out. I think we got, oh, I have so much, so much we could have talked about. Um, Pokemon Go, 35% growth over the summer. That, that's a high. That's higher than I would have thought it was, really? was going to be. Yeah, people are still playing. I, I play, feel like they people play twice a day. They keep really? adding. They My keep. Missy the just got back on it. Really? Yeah. I was on it for a while, and I was like, "Oh, this is so fun!" And then it was just sort of like. Eh, but they've okay. added trading. They added these daily goals and these challenges. You can and be they, friends. Is it like a step friends. goal? Like a daily step goal? Kind like of. Kind of. <laughs> Like you can go get these research goals, and and some of them like they'll, they'll, they'll build up to you getting like like bigger you know better uh, Pokemon or items or things like that. Oh. Um, so there's, there's a lot to engage. Then you can now you can you, you can add friends and give them gifts, and you can trade Pokemon. So like a lot is there to kind of bring you back. Uh, gyms have changed. There are now raids where they'll have a, a more powerful Pokemon on a gym like for a temporary time, and you can yeah. team up against it and everything. I just checked into our Pokestop next door. Oh, there's um, a Pokestop here. Yeah, it's the the church directly next door nice that was uh coming around the ring truck um uh, sunday after sunday night's wrestling show and i'm like what are these guys doing illicit things behind the truck oh they're playing pokemon <laughs> um with my wrestler friends uh <laughs> so uh but again i'm completely like i'm completely playing right now i just i'm just going i'm not even like like paying attention to it and i'm playing this thing that's that's how i might have to get back on it be, be my friend. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll share friend. the codes. Okay, You get cool. a QR code that has a friend code and everything Only like that. Only if you guys have a Meowth, if you'll trade me a Meowth. We Can have one. I, have, I, have a, I, might okay. ha- I might have a spare sparkly one. And I have every Ooh. Pikachu with a hat and uh, at least one each of each hat uh, uh, up as a Raichu. I do love Pikachu with a hat yes. as well. That 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 That's was one. <laughs> one of the things that brought me back for a while was Pikachu with the hat. I still need to get this crowd. What hat got you back? Was it the Christmas uh, hat? It was a Christmas hat. hat. <laughs> it was a Christmas hat. I don't think I think I missed the, the birthday Christmas. hat. I have the, I had the birthday. I have the Ash hat. I have the new Safari hat that was over the summer. I got to get to the hat so we can get out of here because the I next podcast sh- just showed up. Guys, I want to give a shout out to our friend. Hold on, I need to get this Growlithe so I can read the copy. And then, uh, but anyways, um, guys, uh, putting the, <laughs> together the puzzle of design and media from branding to print and digital projects, he'll do it for you because you're too busy playing Pokemon like I am. Uh, Alexander Cars can do logos, merchandise, websites, and even photo and video projects. Check out Alex Cars, alexandercars.com and alexcars.media, our friend on the West Coast. This Growlithe isn't caught yet. What the heck? Um, <laughs> check him out. K A H. RS alexcars.media to get started. We've done a lot of projects and web work and, and DVD covers and uh, t shirts with him. He's uh, kind of our go to a lot of times for graphic projects. So please go check him out. Guys, if you're in the area this Wednesday night on the 19th, we are having game night here at Sorotron Media. We had a blast here. We had like 15 people in here playing games. We were playing Jumanji and watching Jumanji. I believe there's a uh, Batman Flux card game that somebody picked up that said they were bringing. I, I hear Munch, uh, rumblings of Munchkin coming in. By the way, you can play Munchkin coming up on the uh, Nintendo Switch. A lot of board games and, and, uh, and Catan and everything is coming on there. Settlers is gonna, coming? Yeah, and they're going to be multiplayer and everything. Uh, but if you like physical games, come join us here in the studio. Hang out with us. Let's play some board games. And also stay tuned for Pittsburgh PodCon 9... The, yeah, September. I'm reading the numbers phonetically. Uh, September 30th uh, down at the Spirit Lounge in the Lawrenceville neighborhood of Pittsburgh. Uh, there's going to be a live stream. Where there's going to be everybody's going to be there with their podcast tables representing. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, there is beer. Uh, there, there's a there's a bar there, uh, and we're going to do um, an official live stream panel for as part of the International Podcast Day. 24 hours. I think it's doing full 24 hours. The, the schedule just came out for that. And Pittsburgh is represented on it. Looking forward to that. Crystal, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. This is fun, guys. Where Crashing can... your, your dude <laughs> game talk. <laughs> you can crash anytime. <laughs> anytime. And it's anytime. not always just dudes. Sometimes yeah, we, we got have... Katie. I know. I There's was going to say daughters, too. She she comes and crashes, too. That's so right. I just said that. Uh, but where can people <laughs> find out what you're, what you're doing online? Um, so kgrandymedia.com. Um, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, um, begrudgingly Twitter. And um, yeah, you know, feel free to reach out. I'm an open book. So and stay tuned for my uh, reality TV debut. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> what was it? Divorced and dating, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitter, chillatech.net. John Chichilla on the Facebook. You hit the, yeah, you always hit different ones. And I'm like, oh, which ones didn't he hit? 
So yes, it's John Chill on the Facebook. Um, <laughs> and uh, hold on, I'm, I got to get this Bulbasaur just showed up across the street here. <laughs> you know what? They need to have like hold a chinchilla. A Someone needs to. We need. Palmas? We need to. We need to uh, get them to add a chinchilla to. Pokemon. This Bulbasaur is going down, man. Uh, but anyways, uh, SorgatronMedia.com. Check out all the great podcasts, including the newest podcast on the network. Our friends at the Pittsburgh Current. We're working on uh, at least one other is in the works currently. That's going to be debuting in uh, November. That'll be joining the network. But uh, we just had also, I want to give a shout out Fishing Without Bait. We just had Janelle Burdell um, on there. The first episode just went up where uh, she's in here playing some on our Udu drums. And there's a live performance as part of the podcast. And she talked about um, this was really cool because we were doing the live stream and uh, she was talking about being a nine year old girl and wanting to do the drums and how that was looked down upon. And my mother being a percussionist and a drafter, two things that were very kind of anti girl back in the day. And she's doing both of those still to this day. So a nice little connection there. A great story there. Go go check that out. Uh, fishingwithoutbait.com. And I'm going to get this damn Bulbasaur, I swear. Guys, thank you so <laughs> much for our awesome chat. Uh, you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com dot com.